in case you didn't get that. But this is actually my online handle. I've been using it for about two years now. And um, I'm originally from Ireland. And uh, just got back from China a couple months ago. I was living here last uh, three years. So, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself before I continue. I have a background in education is in IT and business. And this was the last big company I worked for uh, before going over to China was Sun Microsystems. Uh, left them just as they were getting taken over by Oracle. And then I went to China for three years and was teaching English there. And it was while I was there in my free time that I came across Bitcoin and started using it and uh, so on. So, Bitcoin. Talk a bit about Bitcoin itself and what Bitcoin enables, the, the ecology that's growing around it. So, what is Bitcoin? Long story short, it's digital cash. It's like hard cash. It's a digital cash or you think of it in terms of digital gold. It's um, to create Bitcoin, you have to mine it. I'll explain that in a bit. To, um, once you send Bitcoin to someone, it's gone. And you can't get back. So in that sense, it's just like cash. Once you send it, it's gone. It's not like a credit card where you can call the company and say, actually, no, that wasn't me. And, uh, like cash, you keep in the wallet as well. So, Bitcoin is limited in quantity. Now, it's a digital currency, and unusual for digital currencies, it's limited in quantity. Most digital currencies, you know, you're just adding zeros and the quantity of it go up. It's very easy. You just a key and it happens. With Bitcoin, however, uh, due to its decentralized nature, it is limited in quantity. There's a maximum of 21 million Bitcoins. That will never be created. Right now, every 10 minutes, 10, about 50 bitcoins are created. And in a couple of years' time, that will drop by half, and then drop by half, and drop by half, until there are no more bitcoins being created, and there's 21 million bitcoins that have been created, and that are kind of sloshing around the system. Right now, there's 8 million bitcoins circulating, and uh, you can divide a single bitcoin down to the 8th decimal place. So you can make bitcoins really, really small. Well, let's talk about it being decentralized. So, Bitcoin is decentralized in the sense that there's no one single company, group, or computer that has track of all the Bitcoins and transactions and has what and where. It's spread across a whole network of computers. And these computers are usually called Bitcoin miners. And what these miners do actually is it, 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 it's very interesting. Um, I'll get on to it in a second, but. When you use Bitcoin yourself, you run a Bitcoin program and it connects to the Bitcoin network, and you become part of this network. And actually, when you send Bitcoin to someone else, you're actually telling the whole network that you're sending the Bitcoin email to someone else. So it is a public record of all the transactions that happen on the network. So like I said, it's not cash, it's not credit, it's decentralized. It's run by a network of computers that anybody can join. So if you want to start buying Bitcoin, you could go buy the equipment, set it up, and run it in your basement. As long as you have sufficient electricity and an internet connection, you can buy Bitcoin. So, why would you bother using Bitcoin at all? So, the one advantage of Bitcoin, apart from it being digital and everything that that entails, is it's on very, very low cost. If you want to send Bitcoin to someone else, no matter what the amount, whether it's one Bitcoin, thousands, or a million, if you were so lucky. Um, the cost of spending it is the same, it's like fractions of a penny. Sometimes it, it, you don't pay any cost at all. There, there are costs involved, but you might not be paying at this point in time. And that's one really good advantage. So transactions are really cheap. Sending Bitcoin to other people is, is very, very cheap. And the innovation that Bitcoin does is it automates the supply of money. Like I said, there's a limited amount of Bitcoin, 21 million. And it's being created at a constant rate. And in about a year and a half's time, that rate will drop by half, and it will drop by half a couple of years later, and so on. So everybody knows how many Bitcoins are being created. And it, it, it's automated. The supply of it is automated as opposed to having a central bank and meetings ready to decide whether to print, what is it, 60 billion, 70 billion pounds is the latest thing that they're doing at the moment. Um, also, the Bitcoin network itself, it has built into the system it, the ability to process all the Bitcoin transactions. 
And this is a part of, of uh, this is this is a part of the, this is one of the major advantages. The actual network itself is um, a massive transaction processing machine. And every time someone has a computer, has a Bitcoin miner to this network, they increase the processing power of the network. So um, one thing it does is it makes uh, the payment problem. If you're a website or you're a developer or you're a business and you want to accept payments, as was mentioned before, you have to open a bank account, you have to get a merchant account, you have to approve, you have to pay two, three percent fees on every transaction, and it's a pain. With Bitcoin, you don't have any of this bureaucracy. You don't have any of these, these same, uh, I suppose you could say, non-technical problems with accepting payments. It makes accepting payments a technical problem only. So as long as you're able to program, or if you know someone who's able to program, it's very, very easy for your website or your service or your business to accept payments from anywhere in the world using Bitcoin. And what this does is this opens up a whole, whole uh, ecosystem of, of things that were once impossible, but have now just been made a little bit difficult, or sometimes very difficult. What was often holding people back in terms of innovation, but doing things with money, talking about microfinance, micro payments, micro loans and so on. A lot of it is the existing banking and financial system. There's just so much bureaucracy and laws and rules and regulations, there's very few places to place to place. Now if you want to do anything, if you want to get any uh, traction, you just spend all your time being, being your bank manager, being all these different people filling forms and trying to be compliant. With Bitcoin, you don't have to do any of that. You set up your Bitcoin system, and you, you integrate it with your website, and then straight away you can start accepting payments of Bitcoin or making them. And there's a lot of different things you can do about it with that. So it makes things that were impossible just difficult. So I'll talk about some of the different things that Bitcoin is being used for that it's allowing to make possible. I think Bitcoin is somewhat of an evolutionary set of money. It's an entirely digital money and it's unique. In, in many of its properties that it can't just be inflated into oblivion. And it, it is evolutionary, it is just one step forward, but what the it allows is revolutionary. I think the services that Bitcoin allows are revolutionary. So I'm going to talk about money transfer and how Bitcoin facilitates this. So if you want to transmit money today, you have a couple of choices. You can use your local bank and you can use Swift or wire transfer if you want to send to a foreign country. And it takes about 20, it costs about 25 to 40 pounds depending on the bank. And it takes between four to seven days, or four to eight days, again, depending on the bank. So that's a long time and it's kind of expensive. If you need to get money sent quickly, you have to use Western Union. You get it in the hour, uh, but you have to pay 20%, so it's very expensive. With Bitcoin, Anybody can open, anybody who has the trust of, of people can open a Bitcoin exchange where you trade Bitcoin for a local currency. And what's happened all around the world is people have opened Bitcoin exchanges, exchanged to sell Bitcoin for pounds, exchanged to sell Bitcoin for dollar, for euro, for Polish, Polsi, and so on and so forth, for the Chinese right to And what this allows is Bitcoin to be kind of glue between these, these exchanges. And you can now send money very quickly and very cheaply from one country to another across different economic zones relatively quickly and at very low cost. So the way it works is if I want to say send a thousand pounds over to my family over in China, then what I would do is I get my money, put it into my local bank account, use my local bank account to transfer it to the bank account of a local Bitcoin exchange. That takes about an hour. I then use those pounds that have been in my account of Bitcoin exchange to buy Bitcoins and send them to a foreign Bitcoin exchange, BTC China for example, which exchanges Bitcoins for Chinese renminbi. And then I sell Bitcoins for local currency and then transfer it out to my wife's bank account. The whole process may take a day to a day and a half and the total cost is roughly around 1%. It's a big step forward in terms of time and a big step forward in terms of lower cost. If you need to get things done really, really quickly, yes, you can do it in Western Union, but Bitcoin makes, makes this a lot easier. And the great thing is that anybody can add their exchange to this network. If you're living, if all you need is an internet connection and a bank account, and you can start exchanging Bitcoin for your local currency. 
So it's a quick plugin for any any uh, microcurrency or say there's just big money exchanges for the limit dollar for a second life dollar and so on and so forth. Um, at the moment, I work with a group called Peter Sango, the, the second largest Bitcoin exchange, the UK based. And on this exchange, you can buy uh, Bitcoins with pounds, dollars, euros, and so on. And um, you can send that to any other foreign exchange via Peter Sango or the other. You know, pretty nice. So, another area that Bitcoin makes really, really I suppose revolutionized, makes the impossible possible, is coin core finance. It's like stock markets, bonds, loans, and debt collection. So I'm going to talk about stock markets because that's something that I have some experience with. Um, uh, roughly about a year ago, I founded the GLBSE, the Global Bitcoin Stock Exchange, uh, as a way for people to raise bitcoins, and therefore money, to use for the projects and ideas that they have. And it has been a relative success, not been absolutely huge, but it's been a fairly big success. So people with very, very little money, so, you know, as low as 50p or, or less, can actually buy shares of companies that are trading on this stock exchange in Bitcoin. And the companies, when they make profit, they pay out dividends to shareholders in Bitcoin. And there's several companies, well, about 10, 15 companies, several of them are mining companies, Bitcoin mining companies, there's a couple of financial companies on there as well, and uh, there's also my company as well, the Global Bitcoin Stock Exchange. So I did this when I was, uh, I started it during my free time, and then once I came back, I'm now working full time on this, and full time for Intersango as their community manager. Next area is uh, loans. There's a company called the Islamic Bank of Bitcoin, which are actually, it's a, uh, it's a share on my stock exchange. It started off as a share on my stock exchange. And they do microfinance, microloans. So they sold their shares, they got the capital, and they're now doing mini loans for like amounts of 30, 40, or 50 pounds in Bitcoin to various groups of people. And they've been turning the profit. And they've been paying out dividends to shareholders. You know, relatively small amounts, but this is what it's all about. It's microfinance, microloans. And, um, one of the cool things about this like bank of Bitcoin is the guy who runs it is totally anonymous. Nobody knows who he is, nobody knows where he lives. The point is that he's got a reputation as being someone who's trustworthy and is paying out the dividends and running the business as he should, as he's supposed to be. Another cool thing, um, that there's a new project that's on the way, it's called Bitrop. It's a peer-to-peer package delivery system. Basically, if you can imagine having a uh, being able to send a package to someone by, by having someone come and collect it and deliver it to them and the only thing you know about this person is their email address. This is how the system works and it's possible because of Bitcoin as a payment system. So let's talk about a node is basically someone who's using who wants to be part of the BitDrop network and they want to be able to accept packages and deliver packages and get payment for doing this. So someone will go on to the drop and they'll see how far they will to travel from where they live. And this creates a node, you know, it's a distance. And then people live beside other people, so nodes are connected to other nodes. So what we have here is like a cluster of nodes. So if, let's say someone in node A wants to send a package to node B, he goes to the node beside him and gives the package, he gives it to the next node, who gives it to the next node, who gives it to the guy who draws, who goes on a daily trip down the countryside and gets to the next node, and then hands on the package to the next person, the next person, until it reaches the final destination. A may not actually know where B actually lives. Bit drop goes on, and it makes sure the package gets there. And every node along the way, every time it passes through, they get a sliver of the income, of the price that they pay to deliver the package. Bitcoin allows this sort of thing to go on. Finally, I want to talk about Silk Road, which is, um, you could call it the eBay of illegal goods on the internet. Because of Bitcoin, this website called Silk Road, so no, the, the location of the website is actually hidden. It's inside what's called the dark net. It's a network over a network. And on this website, you can buy and sell guns, drugs, and various other illegal things and have them delivered to your home, and you pay in Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is 
semi anonymous. They're able to accept it as a currency without the fear of being of being mapped, of being called by the police. And the police haven't actually been able to shut down this website because they don't know where it's physically located. It's hidden inside the Tor Darknet. And uh, so I think roughly in July 2000, July last year, uh, US Senator Chuck Schumer tried to wage war on Still broke the website. All we ended up doing was uh, publicizing it to the facts. And they were able to shut it down. And it brought it to the attention of tons and tons of people who had never heard of it. But suddenly the, the business and the traffic on this website was shot through the roof as a result. So Bitcoin itself has allowed this, this particular service uh, to exist where it would not otherwise have been able to. Now Bitcoin is it's just the money. It, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't do good or do bad things. You can use cash for good things, or you can use cash for bad things. Bitcoin just allows people to use it as cash on the internet. And uh, that's pretty much most of my talk. So thank you very much.